welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Today I'm taking you back to the very eventful reign of King Henry VIII for On This Day in Tudor History, the 9th of December 1541. 64-year-old Agnes Tilney, Dowager Duchess of Norfolk and step-grandmother of Queen Catherine Howard, who was being detained at the Lord Chancellor's home, was questioned regarding the location of her money and her jewels. What was all this about? Why was the Queen's step-grandmother being confined and questioned? Well, let me tell you. Just over two months earlier, on the 2nd of November 1541, All Souls Day, Henry VIII had been informed that allegations had been made about his fifth wife's past. Just over a month earlier, on the 2nd of November 1541, All Souls Day, King Henry VIII had been informed that allegations had been made about his fifth wife's past. His Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, who had not the heart to tell it by word of mouth, had shared this shocking news in a letter to the King, explaining that Mary Hall, who'd been a member of the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk's household at Lambeth and Horsham with Catherine in the 1530s, had told her brother, John Lascelles, that Catherine had been intimate with two men. Firstly, with her music teacher, Henry Mannox, who knew a privy mark on her body. And secondly, with Francis Derham, who had lain in bed with her in his doublet and hose between the sheets a hundred nights. The king believed the matter forged, but ordered an investigation into the allegations. Unfortunately, subsequent interrogations of Mannox, Derham and other members of the Dowager Duchess's household confirmed Mary's story. Witnesses numbering eight or nine men and women all agreed in one tale. Catherine had not been a virgin when she married King Henry VIII in July 1540 and her appointment of Francis Derham to serve in her household at court suggested to those investigating the case that she wanted to return to that dissolute living and cheat on the king. Then, during interrogations, Derham implicated Thomas Culpepper, a groom of the king's privy chamber, saying that Culpepper had succeeded him in the queen's affections. It was found that Catherine had been having secret meetings with Culpepper, helped by her lady, Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford. Culpepper and Derham were tried for treason at Guildhall on the 1st of December 1541, found guilty and sentenced to death, being executed at Tyburn on the 10th of December 1541. And Catherine and Jane were attainted for treason and beheaded at the Tower of London on the 13th of February 1542. But where does Agnes Tilney, Dowager Duchess of Norfolk, come into all this? Why was she confined? Why was she being questioned about her money and jewellery? Well, it was because it was her household that Catherine was a part of in the 1530s when she had these two intimate relationships. The Crown wanted to get to the bottom of what went on and how much the Dowager Duchess had known about it. Had she hidden this information from the King? Was she guilty of misprision of treason? On the 4th of December 1541, Thomas Risley and William Fitzwilliam, Earl of Southampton, wrote to Sir Rafe Sadler, Henry VIII's principal secretary, regarding a visit they'd made to the Dowager Duchess. They reported that she was not so sick as she made out, but able enough to go to my Lord Chancellor's. So they advised her to go to Sir Thomas Audley, the Lord Chancellor, because he had some questions for her. After her arrival at the Lord Chancellor's house, she was then subjected to an interrogation with a long list of questions regarding Derham's employment, Derham's relationship with Catherine, and whether she saw any evil behaviour or light fashion in Derham towards Mrs Catherine, whether Catherine and Derham had been pre-contracted, whether Derham asked her for help to get the Queen to appoint him, and whether she then asked the Queen whether she'd opened Derham's coffers and removed anything, and all kinds of other questions. The poor Dowager Duchess 
who had opened Derham's coffers and removed items on hearing of him being interrogated, must have been terrified at this point. It is little wonder that the Earl of Southampton recorded the next day, all things here proceed well, and my Lady of Norfolk hath so meshed and tangled herself that I think it will be hard for her to wind out again. The Dowager Duchess did, however, deny having any suspicion of evil between the Queen and Derham, which unfortunately didn't match information gathered from other members of the household, who stated that she was aware, although she chastised them. Derham confessed that she'd beaten Catherine on finding her in Derham's arms. And Catherine Tilney stated that the Dowager Duchess gave also Derham a blow. With regards to opening Derham's coffer, witnesses stated that the Duchess confessed to taking certain writings and ballads and concealing them, which, as Sir Anthony Brown and Sir Rafe Sadler wrote in a report, suggested that they contained treason and the likelihood that the Duchess knew of the former naughty life between the Queen and Derham. On the 8th of December 1541, the King gave orders for the Dowager Duchess, her son, Lord William Howard, and her daughter, the Countess of Bridgewater, to be committed to the Tower of London for misprision of treason, and for their houses and goods to be put in safe custody. Then, on this day in history, the 9th of December 1541, members of the King's Council in London reported that they had conceived interrogatories for the Duchess of Norfolk, but were examining the Duchess as to where her money and treasure is before proceeding further. They also asked other members of the Council and the King whether they should indict the Dowager Duchess, seeing as she is old and testy and might take her committal to heart so as to endanger her life. She obviously was not in the best of health and the council were concerned about getting their hands on her money and jewels while she was alive rather than her dying in the tower before her goods had been forfeit to the crown. Lovely. These men were all heart, weren't they? But then I suppose they were just doing their job. On the 11th of December 1541, the Dowager Duchess was committed to the tower while a search was carried out at her home, Norfolk House. A large amount of money was found and plate and jewels were taken. On the 21st of December, the Earl of Southampton and Thomas Risley reported that they'd been to see the Dowager Duchess at the tower to urge her to reveal more of the lewd demeanour of the Queen and Derham but that they found her on her bed, apparently very sickly. I think I'd be sickly if I was worrying about following Culpepper and Derham to the scaffold. According to them, the Dowager Duchess sorrowfully protested that she never suspected anything more than a light love between them and thought that Derham gave her money only because he was her kinsman. And she begged for the King's pardon for not telling him before the marriage and for breaking into Derham's coffer. She also confessed to having more money hidden at her home and begged the king not to give away her home at Lambeth. The two men went on to report that they now had 5,000 marks in money and 1,000 pounds worth of plate from their searches and that Risley would sleep better if the king would appoint it to other hands. On the 22nd of December, 1541, members of the Howard and Tilney family, plus their staff, were tried for misprision of treason, for covering up the unlawful, carnal, voluptuous and licentious life of Queen Catherine Howard while she lived with the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk at Lambeth. The sickly Dowager Duchess was named in the indictments, but wasn't tried. She was accused of knowing the loose conduct of the Queen, having vehement suspicion of an unlawful intercourse between her and Derham, and having falsely commended and praised the said Catherine for her pure and honest condition in the presence of the king and others. She was also accused of breaking open Derham's coffer and taking out various chattels, writings and letters and concealing them. The Dowager Duchess was convicted of misprision of treason for her part in concealing Catherine's past. But fortunately for her, 
she wasn't executed. She remained in the Tower of London until May 1542, when she was pardoned. Some of her properties were restored to her and she kept her head. So a very lucky escape. She died three years later in 1545 at the age of 68. Other members of the Howard and Tilney families were also pardoned. Only Derham, Culpepper, Catherine and Jane lost their lives. It must, however, have been a terrifying time for all those involved. Historian Marilyn Roberts wrote two excellent articles for the Amberlynn Files on the Howards and Tilneys at this time, so I'll give you links to those. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about two Roman Catholic martyrs from Elizabeth I's reign who came to their sticky ends due to the work of famous priest finder Richard Topcliffe. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about two Roman Catholic martyrs from Elizabeth I's reign who came to their sticky ends due to the work of famous priest finder Richard Topcliffe. Do make sure you're subscribed, click there, and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 9th of December 1538, courtier and gentleman of the Privy Chamber, Sir Edward Neville, was beheaded on Tower Hill. He'd been condemned to death for treason, accused of conspiring against the King in the Exeter Conspiracy of 1538, along with members of the Pole family. He was also accused of saying, the King is a beast and worse than a beast, which is not a wise thing to be overheard saying in Tudor England, is it? You can find out more about Neville's life and downfall in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. You can give me a like and you can leave a comment if you wish. I'll be back very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.